Hello, this is Christos and this is my recording for the FBX converter. Uh, as you can see, I implemented the file and the math engine since uh, I'm uh, using some of the functions that we made for that. Uh, these are the headers, the FBX one, like we explained in class. The ones that I implemented myself are these. The material data is still in beta. I haven't implemented it. It's for uh, future um, shaders for the engine. So basically with this, I actually already I copy all the MBA data, the diffuse, the specular, the emissive, the opacity, everything goes in this and this will be a special file that is supposed to um, inform the shader inside the engine of what it's supposed to do. Here you can see there's an enum about the texture because we have all sorts of uh, texture types. So far I only came across diffuse, specular, normal textures. So this is what I do to them. Uh, one, once you go inside the texture, um, you can see here that uh, it actually tells you um, uh, if you if your uh, texture is a diffuse color, you actually set the enum to that. Specular, normal, you do this, um, and this is where actually the uh, the FBX converter goes to the textures. Um, other than that, the object file header has the name of the object, which is specified in the beginning, the number of vertices, the offset of uh, the vertices written in the buffer, the number of triangles, the offset of the triangles, of the original rotation, and the scale from the FBX format. And um, that's about it. Um, what I did is that I actually implemented the vodka and the LAU inside the converter. So basically, you don't have to go through the process of running batch files afterwards. Um, what, it, what the program does at this point is that it exports uh, an LIU with uh, all the textures for the model as different files inside it. So basically it exports one file. As you can see here, uh, it uh, takes your name, uh, the name that you input for the file, and it adds the dot bin. Um, ending so basically that uh, the vodka will understand it and encode it into a BLO. It removes all the BLOs so that you don't have a problems with the LIU later. It goes through the process that we explained in class. Um, it sorts out the uh, the vertices, it rearranges the triangles, it, it sorts the, the, the vertices to the point where um, all the double ones are gone and um, then it goes in and starts writing into the file. First we write the header uh, according to whatever uh, information we got um, inside the display mesh we got um, you see here we got uh, the info about the, the, the name we got the info about the triangles um, and uh, all the other stuff we needed um, and uh, then when we go uh, inside here, basically, we're past the texture. Uh, I should explain a bit more about that since um, uh, the program actually exports the texture separately into their own uh, .bin files. Um, here's the header for them. It has the name of the texture, um, the, the offset of where they're written inside the file, and um, uh, the type of texture. Uh, like we explained, it's three types of texture so far. Mm. So basically, in the beginning, we get the the net. Well, th there was a problem that a lot of textures were kind of weird named. So there were like um, the files were wrong, the the ending was wrong. We need the files in the TGA, and this is what we do actually uh, for this converter to work. Uh, in the main file, we need the um, we need the ending to be uh, a TGA file. So basically, what we do, what I do is. I chop off the rest of the file name and path. I keep the original name, and um, after that, I tokenize it. Um, I add the TGA uh, um, ending. So, uh, well, we have to convert the image ourselves without this program, but that's an easy task. And then I create um, a dot bean file. Add the txt before the bean because sometimes the um, the um, the textures have the same name as the main file and that, that can lead into some problems when we're trying to vodka them so to avoid that I add this suffix to the name 
And then I just open the file, the TGA file, secret sand, find out how big it is, create a buffer. And um, I read and write everything inside the buffer. And I close the file, open the binary file, write everything in it. First the ending, then um, the actual uh, TGA file. And then we write the um, header with the updated info. And after that, I've bought get. So basically, you can see here, um, I uh, created a pseudo um, a pseudo string where I create a vodka command, and then I pass it into the system, and it does everything for me. I don't have to do any batch files, anything else. And uh, it does this for every texture that's associated with our program. So basically, we uh, as long as we have the uh, texture converted into TGA, it won't have a problem with locating it and writing it. If we don't, it will not uh, do it. It will just skip it. Um, then we go back at the end of the conversion. And here is where we do the same thing. We actually wrote everything in. And then we vodka this. And then we uh, LIU everything. So we create a, an SPU file uh, given the name that we gave. And um, as uh, you can see here, um, I start the command with an LIU and uh, add every other parameter. The only problem here is everything will be revision one, but at this point, I don't believe this to be a problem. I might add this and add some extra um, command in the future to help me, like you know, uh, add more info about this. And um, that's about it. After the end, I delete all the BLOs and all the bean files because they're no longer useful, and we already packed everything. So uh, to have everything uh, packed and uh, without a problem, I just erased the temporary files that we used. And um, right now, um, you can see here in the properties, I have um, the missile file. The missile file is quite big. And um, I just run the program. And um, it takes some time since uh, there are a lot of vertices, a lot of uh, info in this one and it just converts everything and it gives us back uh, an SPU file uh, which we can directly input into our engine and our engine takes care of everything else so basically it's a one step if we do it uh, inside the game engine uh, folder we don't even have to copy the file over it just stays there and you can open it directly uh, the only parameter here is that you need to remember the name of the texture uh, that you input so basically, um, if you don't want to, you can input any texture because the texture is separated from the actual model. So, um, but if you want the actual texture, you have to remember its name uh, later in the engine. I will show you why that has to be. Um, let's try and um, do a conversion here uh, inside the command line. This is the exe, so convert me dot exe. Uh, let's do the the space frigate. Oh, I don't have it in. Uh, let's do the pyramid then. This is the pyramid. Um, let's name it uh, Pyramid Mayan. This is the journal name and uh, that's about it. I don't want to export it in the file and uh, here's what happens. It will just export everything and uh, it will look for the, full of the, for the files for the texture and it will add everything in the SPU. And um, once that is done, it just keeps the SPU in place. So I will just show you here. Here is the, the oh no, this is not the folder. Uh, the folder for this specific one is here. So. So here you go. Um, this is uh, date modified. This is the Pyramid Mayan SPU we made. This is the missile SPU we made. And uh, the only it doesn't mess up with other any other files. It doesn't create any other files. It just does that. Um, and you can see here it created everything. And uh, you can take that SPU after this. 
and you can go into the you can go into the game engine and um I had to cut and continue the video. Um, the game engine actually, uh, I upgraded it. Here is the archetype. This is um, the first. Uh, it used to be all the cubes, the pyramids are now archetypes. Um, I removed the texture ID from it. I don't want the textures to be associated with it. And because I couldn't implement, for some reason, I couldn't implement the archiver into my project. Um, I'm gonna leave it for now and I went with implementing its code specifically into the extract archetype. So basically into our scene, uh, where's the scene? Um, into our scene we just start by making a new archetype. We uh, extract archetype and we type in just the name of the archetype that we want to extract. We don't need the SPU uh, um, ending. We don't need anything else. The program will do it for us. And then we uh, extract the texture first in the extract texture. Here you can see it better. First you input the name of the SPU file and then the name of the texture file you want exported and it will extract it. And then in the game object file, which the game object can be anything. It can be any kind of archetype, any kind of model. Uh, you just input um, first the archetype you used and then the texture you want to use and uh, after that you set a starting position, a rotation, item position, you can even set a scale um, for it um, but I don't think I have it uh, implemented 100% yet so mm, <clears throat> and you can change this dynamically if you want through the program I have to add some uh, sorts of for functionality to do this um, so basically everything is a game object and everything is an archetype and uh, every texture used is a texture. You can use textures from other SPU files. Um, the thing, the trick here is because the textures are pretty big to keep to be kept in memory, I uh, create inside here, um, I actually create a TGA file when I'm loading it. I'm creating a TGA file and um, from then on, you can uh, read from that from memory. Uh, I removed the TXT and um, so that you're able to read it. And um, after that, uh, the TGA is created inside the memory, uh, inside the um, at the same spot where the SVU file is. And from then on, it's been used. Um, I didn't add a remove every time the texture is not lo no longer used because um, it might be needed for the future. Uh, I might add it given um, I might want to get rid of trash since I can already um, extract it anytime I want I, I want to from uh, my SPU file. Um, what else? Uh, the, the camera is updated. Um, I added the functionality on which you uh, rotate around the world or uh, rotate around an object. So basically as you can see here, these are like my models loaded. You can speak the speed of frigate in the background. Uh, the problem I'm having is with the cooling for uh, the color, the surface cooling. So basically, if you change the camera around, it kills the color. I don't know how to solve that right now. Uh, I kept the previous functionality of my camera because I kind of enjoy it. So for moving around, uh, but I added a new one. You can see here it's the house in the middle is the middle is the medium polygon. The pumpkin is the low one, the, the Mayan temple, and the frigate in the back. Uh, the, the, the reason I have my um, my house rotated is because if I keep it upside down, it kind of um, uh, shows, it kind of so, uh, shows like um, dark. I need to fix that um, in the future. I think if I add a shader that handles it, it should be a lot easier to do. So all right, at this point, if you hit the insert point, you get to, um, as you can see in the background, uh, you are accessing a node right now. So this time uh, we are at the pyramid. If we move left or right arrow, we go to another object. Uh, right now we're um, at the building. Right now we're at the, um, at the pumpkin. So um, and then at the end we're at the um, space forget. If we move, if we hit the up arrow, we go to the road. And the root is no object. Uh, so, um, and if we hit the done button, then we go to the child, and we can rotate around the object as freely as we want. Uh, at this, at 
before that, if we hit insert again, we go back to moving around with the key op with the uh, key op objects, and uh, the page up and page down is used to move the camera up and down. W, A, S, D are used to rotate the camera up and down, and uh, this is around the position of the camera. It doesn't change the axis uh, of where you are. It just moves around. So, well, in we we're in the choose something. As you can see here, it becomes brighter when you when you chose it. Um, so basically, when we're at root, nothing is lit, and basically we're looking at 0, 0.0. So if we hit W at this point, we rotate around 0, 0.0. If we hit D, we rotate sideways. So if we hit A, we rotate the other side, and S, we rotate backwards. So here is you can see this. Um, the 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 cool thing I kind of added was that if at this point we access an item and um, we access the pyramid right now. So right now, if we hit D, we rotate depending on where the pyramid is standing. If we hit uh, well, the W and S don't don't work that well with this option. It kind of moves way too fast after a while. I need to fix the math on that. I guess I have to ask Ed about it. Um, so whatever item we choose, we get to move to where the item is. Uh, so we can like view it better. So um, I guess I need to fix my math to uh, change the camera aspect depending on where uh, we're looking at and know where, where the camera is. Uh, like uh, Ed did. And um, this is about it, the demo. You can pretty much, uh, pretty much load everything. I'll show you the code for uh, the game object. It's pretty simple. You just, um, uh, it's for the archetype. It's pretty simple. You just go in, you just open the SPU file, um, you read the chunks and until you find the model you want, and then you call the create VAO with that buffer. I kept the old one around, the old create VAO, just in case I want some um, to load something with the old format, but I wouldn't advise using it since uh, the new way is a lot easier. Yeah, as you can see here, um, it uh, the, it's overloaded and it loads both ways. So uh, this is my engine and this is how to use it. I think it's pretty easy and um, I think it's pretty automated. Um, hope you enjoy this.